This is a view from the International Space Station showing the size of Hurricane Milton, which has now just regained Category 5 strength. Milton's rapid intensification has already solidified its place in the record books. Ominous looking picture right there, right? Well, meteorologist Vanessa Murdoch spoke with some hurricane experts about our unlucky 13th named storm of the season. A beast born by Mother Nature, one of the fastest rapidly intensifying hurricanes ever to burden the Atlantic Basin. This is Milton, Monday evening at its most intense. It exploded from a Cat 2 to a Cat 5 in just five hours. It's always humbling to watch that happen. Uh, thankfully, we had both the NOAA and Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft in the storm throughout that period yesterday. The flights made tracking intensification minute by minute possible, according to the National Hurricane Center director, Dr. Michael Brennan. The rate of intensification, according to records, it was basically just behind uh, Wilma and Felix. We so spoke yesterday. with Phil Klotzbach of Colorado State here, University uh, and Dr. Brennan Tuesday morning about the historic milestones already marked by Milton. And in terms of the central pressure that we saw drop below 900 millibars, it puts a Milton in the very upper echelon of intense hurricanes on record in the Atlantic. The lowest central pressure pressure measured for Milton, 897 millibars, making it the fifth most intense on record. The leader remains 2005's Wilma with a central pressure of 882 millibars. Wilma made its second landfall in Cape Romano, Florida. When discussing historic milestones of Milton, we must also consider Helene. Milton's landfall will mark the second major hurricane following Helene to hit Florida in less than two weeks. Uh, the shortest time between officially two major landfalls was back in 1950. It was like 42 days. Klotzbach says one might also consider hurricanes Ivan and Jean, which made landfall about 11 days apart in 2004. However, Ivan hit just west of Gulf Shores, Florida in Alabama. In the historical record, if you officially define that it has to make landfall in the state of Florida, this would be the shortest time that we've observed on record. Klotzbach and I also discussed the season to date. He described it as unusual. It started off wild, unleashing barrel, which devastated parts of Grenada. Then we enjoyed a long lull into mid-September. It's been nonstop since. Helene, now Milton. Thankfully, post-Milton, Klotzbach says the Atlantic Basin looks to go quiet again, relatively speaking, and at least temporarily. But the way you guys are talking, I mean, this is this is pretty ominous as we speak, it's a beast. right? Sure to is. people who say, oh, it might be a bust, it could be a bust, you say what? I say absolutely not. And I have family in Florida. You too. My dad, he's elderly, he's worried, and he should be. And he's on the opposite coast of landfall. Yeah. But there's going to be big impacts there you as know, well. Now, I think looking at Helene versus now Milton, what is the primary difference? Is it just where it's hitting and it's more populated? Well, in that okay. area? The, the primary difference for me is Helene was a storm that affected a huge, huge number of people, right? Mm -hmm. I know it came on shore in a relatively rural area, mm -hmm. but then it moved in and it affected folks that were in North Carolina, South Carolina. This is going to be Florida storm. Period. Mm. This is for Florida. It's a beast, though. It's going to be a monster. You were talking about the rapid intensification of the storms. Uh, I looked yesterday for like that the fastest storm from tropical depression to a Cat 5. So it's not. But, Vanessa, from a Cat 1 to a Cat 5 in 10 hours? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And here's the activity in the tropics right now. All eyes on Mar uh, Milton, but we've got a system here uh, sort of off to the east of Florida has a 20% chance to develop an area to watch off the coast of Africa with a 20% chance to develop. You've got to keep in mind as far as those real busy months of the hurricane season, it's not the dead of summer. Look at this. September gives us more hurricanes than any other month on average. And you would be surprised to know that it is October that is virtually tied with August for second place. A lot of activity in October. In fact, some of the strongest in history have occurred during this month. Here's our picture outside right now, which is a beautiful one. Few clouds, nice looking sky, 66 degrees. 68 was the high, 53. 53, your morning low out there. That is the coldest temperature we've recorded in Central Park since May the 13th, and I see it getting cooler out there still. Uh, no real problems out there. Again, a couple of wispy clouds. Any of the rain to your north stays to the north, not slated for our, our area. These little showers that you see in eastern Pennsylvania, it, it, diurnal, once you take the sun out of the picture, that's going to fade away. We have a beautiful forecast for, you know, the next three days. I don't see any problems. Wednesday, 65. Thursday, 63. Real chilly Thursday morning. Friday, 68. And I think you're back to the 70s by the time you get to the weekend. Got to check in on Hurricane Milton. We talked, you know, we've been talking about this all over the place. 
Back to Cat 5, 165 mile per hour winds, but I want to talk about the track because you, you heard me and Rob Marciano discussing, hey, a 20 mile spin, if it wobbles 10 miles to the north or 10 miles to the south, makes an enormous difference. And it's all because of how these storms circulate the water. So right now we see it coming on shore crazy, crazy consensus it's going to be in and around Tampa. But where in Tampa? Is it just north? Is it just south? Wherever this thing makes its landfall, look at the skinny red line. All right, there's Tampa. This comes in to Tampa, right? But let's talk about it. And let's give you some scenarios. Let's say it goes to Madera Beach, all right? Just to the north of the opening of Tampa Bay. Here is how it circulates water, counterclockwise, right? That's going to just funnel all of that water into this opening. There's nowhere for it to go. It's going to flood. That's where you get. That's where you get a 13 to 15 storm surge with this storm. If, however, you take this and you move it just a little bit down to the south, now that same little circulation, it's actually draining the bay, and that forecast is for about three to five feet of storm surge. It would actually drain the bay at some points in time, but. What a difference. I mean, we're talking eight to 10 feet of difference if it wobbles by 10 miles one way or the other. I mean, <laughs> excuse, excuse the enthusiasm here, guys, but this is fascinating stuff to me. Uh, the two scenarios that could be played out with a 20 mile difference. Again, our forecast around here is it's a weatherman's delight. It's beautiful, guys. Beautiful fall weather, warmer on the weekends, maybe lower mid 70s out there, pretty good looking skies. Uh, otherwise, kind of crisp and sort of fall like out there. But, uh, what a couple weeks this has been. Yeah. That, that feels like it's been three months. Yeah, mm -hmm. two weeks. Not over either. Yeah. Thank no, you, Bonnie. A lot to go. All right.